What's up guys, Eric Psychic here and today I want to share with you guys 10 random little tips I've learned while playing Tibia. Over the years I've learned a lot of tricks and whenever I bring these up I still meet a lot of people who don't know about them. Some of them you may already know, but if you don't know all 10 of these then this video at least served its purpose. So without further ado, here are 10 Tibia tips I think everyone should know. Number 1. Have you ever started one of these new servers that have come out, rushing through Dawnport when all of a sudden you have to leave? Or maybe you got to main when Morta and Morterra first came out and had to go to work, but you really didn't want to log out because the waiting list was like 6 hours long to get back into the game. Maybe you play on a PvP world and you got a few hits on a boss before your enemies showed up and you still want to get a cut of the loot. Or maybe you can find another use for these than what I just listed. If any of this sounds like a situation you've been in, then you need to know about no logout zones. No logout zones are areas all around Tibia, usually involved in world changes, where your character cannot log out or be kicked from the game under any circumstance except server save. If you manage to leave your character in one of these zones for too long, you'll be teleported to the temple when you try to log in if the area disappears. So what can you do with these zones? Well, a few of these no logout zones actually have protection zones in them, so you can leave your character there all day to avoid having to sit through a waiting list when you try to log back in. And like the boss situation, if you log out, you'll lose your chance at the loot you gain from attacking the boss. So if you really have to go, you can put your character in a no logout zone and you'll receive your cut of the loot so long as you stay online. The main no logout zone I'm talking about is the spirit grounds. Since the spirit grounds move every day, you can find it in either the passage between Dara and Ank, the ghost lands of Carlin, or Van Gogh. Simply put your character right outside the portal and you'll stay online until server save. There are also no logout zones in Dawnport between the little vocation pedestals and elsewhere in the game. Even if you don't touch the Tibia client for 15 minutes in a no logout zone, your character will still be in game even though you got kicked back to the character list. Number 2 Trying to have a conversation with someone while hunting in a private message can sometimes get really messy. There's a simple solution to this though. If you go into your hotkeys and put a hashtag in the letter S, your spells won't appear in your private messages anymore. This same thing can be done by putting hashtag Y, W, or B. This is because you're telling the Tibia client to either say, yell, whisper, or whatever B stands for, but since you're using a spell it doesn't matter what the letter after the hashtag is as long as it's one of the four I just listed. If you type hashtag Y in some words for example, you will actually yell your message out loud. Number 3 Have you ever needed to get back to Rashamul since it's your hometown? Or maybe you don't have boat cash but you're trying to set up a mass rush from a town's temple. Hate that long walk back to Farmine from Northern Zhao? This tip is about being able to teleport yourself alone without anyone else's help. So I'm going to show you a couple of the mainstream ways to teleport yourself that I know of, but you can get really creative with this and make teleport spots all over Tibia. The easiest way to set up a teleport is to gather monsters near a spot that can be levitated to. By surrounding the levitated spot with monsters, you can essentially levitate into a group of them and log out, then log in and appear in the temple since you're surrounded in game. This can actually be done without being invisible if you don't have a battle sign and hit Control Q fast enough, or you can just X-log in the monsters. Being invisible is the easiest way though. The three teleport spots I know of are in Northern Zhao with the teleporters, Thai's farm with the sheep in the gate, and Hellgate with the single demon skeleton standing on a pillar. I'm sure there's a million more of these you can create elsewhere though. Number 4 This next tip is great for people really struggling with money. Next time you're making a loot bag, here's what I want you to do. Find a naturally occurring item in the world that covers a gold coin. Now take your loot bag, put it where that item normally would be, and trash it with 9 gold coins with vials in between. Now take the vials out by browsing the field and put your trash back on top. Your loot bag is now totally hidden in a spot no normal player should ever think to look, and you can browse field the spot and put items into it without people knowing. Number 5 Save your money on ceremonial onks and ornamented brooches. Even though you've always been able to check your blessings in any temple by saying the name of the blessing, people still bought the items just to have peace of mind seeing that white text on the screen. But now there's an even better way for those of you that need the visual cue. If you open the Tibia Coin store window and go under the blessings tab, every blessing you currently have will be grayed out. Any blessing you don't have will be lit up because you have the option to buy it with Tibia Coins. I wouldn't buy it with the Tibia Coins though, it's a total ripoff but it's very handy for knowing which blessings you currently have on any character. Numero 6 So you have some soft boots you want to sell in the market that have time left on them. You can't sell them brand new since they've been worn, and you can't sell them worn because they're not completely broken. What do you do? Sit there for hours? I'm sure a lot of people have done this before, but here's a tip. By equipping the soft boots, you're actually taking 6 seconds off their time with each equip. If you create an equip hotkey for them in your inventory and an equip hotkey for them on your feet and spam both hotkeys to take them off and on, you can wear out your soft boots much faster than just sitting around. A full 4 hour break will still take a little bit of time. 
Number 7. Remember when you had to manually change your hotkeys every time you wanted to play a different vocation? It was a nightmare. Nowadays, I use like 30 of my 36 hotkeys. I honestly couldn't imagine switching hotkeys every time. I remember creating Tibia client copies using some guide on the gameplay board so each client had different hotkeys for a separate vocation. But then they came out with hotkey presets. Now I know you all probably know what hotkey presets are, but do you know what this button does in your options menu? If you check this box and name your hotkey presets after your characters, every time you log into that character your hotkeys will automatically switch. If I log into Eric, I get Eric hotkeys. Log into Orc, I get Orc hotkeys. Elf, Elf hotkeys, and so on. I'm just going to throw those in there because some people probably don't know it, but you can switch between hotkey presets quickly by pressing Ctrl J. So if I log in Eric and want to kill someone, I log in and hit Ctrl J and it switches to my Eric PvP hockeys, which are the next down on the list. Number 8. Ever seen a level 8 in Oromon Depot? Bet you were wondering how the heck they got there. Their friend must have escorted them through the Minotaurs, right? Wrong. Well, maybe their friend did, but they wouldn't have had to if they knew this tip. You can get a free teleport to any depot by saying escort to a guide NPC if you're under level 10. There are guide NPCs off of most towns' boats, and even Oramond has one. Unfortunately, there are no guide NPCs in Rashomul. Number 9? Offline training makes training your magic level pretty easy nowadays, but if you have a character that can make runes, I'm going to show you another way to get some free magic level training. First, you're going to have to find a rune that is in high demand on your world. For most PvP worlds, the best rune to make is magic walls if you're a sorcerer. After every hunt when your soul points are full, buy 300 small mana potions and 40 blank runes. This is going to cost you around 15.4k. Now spam those manas and make magic walls. You'll end up with 120 magic walls. Sell the vials back to the shop for 1.5k. Now all you have to do is sell the magic walls for at least NPC price on the market and you've broken even. Sell them for any more than that and you're actually profiting while training your magic level. Technically there's a market fee so you'll have to sell them for like 118 gold each to probably to break even. But either way you can't beat 30,000 free mana spent after every hunt. This tip is mainly with magic walls, but you can do this with other runes as well as long as they sell for a decent price on your market. Number 10. For my last tip, this kind of goes hand in hand with the free magic level training. Not only can you pay for your manas used with the runes you made, you can also reduce the amount of manas you have to buy, or you can just waste mana without making any runes at all. This is done through the PvP and PvE arena. There are 5 arena locations in Tibia. Go to any PvP arena with a friend, Start a match of last man standing, and when you get into the arena, either have your friend kill you, shoot an energy bomb on the ground and suicide, or kill yourself with the claw of the noxious spawn. Once you die, you'll respawn in your home temple with full mana again. The same thing applies to the PvE arena, except you can do it by yourself without anyone else. Just know that the entry fee is more expensive for the PvE arena than it is for the PvP arena. You can do this every 15 minutes with both arenas, and this tip only gets better the higher level you are. When I did it back at level 270, I saved 4k on small manas with every death, and a whole lot of hotkey smashing. A level 500 mage is saving 7.4k every time they refill their mana this way. If you're sitting around training your magic level, you might as well do this with a friend every 15 minutes. And you can even do it by yourself too, by logging on a level 8 on the flash client and starting a match with yourself, which is totally legal to do. The possibilities are endless. The only downside if you really care is that you get a death entry on your death list. But once you do this enough, it's pretty obvious you aren't actually dying to yourself or another person. About a month ago, if you saw my death list, that's where all of my deaths from a trap came from. Alright guys, if you made it to the end of this video, thanks a lot for watching. Even during the making of this video, I teased some friends in TeamSpeak with these tips and they didn't know any of the ones I shared with them, so I think a lot of you probably learned at least something from this. If you like this video and have your own tips you want to share, you can leave a comment, but if you send them to me privately, either by letter in game, YouTube, Facebook, etc., I'll make a part 2 to this with some of my extra tips and I'll throw yours in too and give you a shout out. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.